Hi friends, it's Sophia and welcome to Sophia's Turning 50, where we embrace our age no matter what it is, but especially if we're turning 50 in 2022. Today I'm just going to tell a silly story about myself and then um, I've got a couple of items that I pulled out of the garage that were mine uh, when I was really young in the 1980s. Okay, today I'm just going to tell a little story about um, the way I, one way that I was when I was younger that has kind of evolved as I've gotten older. Um, you know, when I was trying to think of stories in general, you know, because I kind of had wanted to do a storytelling video, all of the stories I could think of from my youth were a little bit too in the gutter, we'll say. I, I don't know why I can't think of um, funny stories that don't involve uh, debauchery and alcohol, but I just can't. And so one thing I wanted to ask all of you um, is if you can, if you know a story from youth, it could be as early as elementary school all the way up to law school. I'm trying to keep it when I was relatively young. Um, either put it in the comments, just remind me about it or um, send me a message because I would like to think of more stories, but I was having a hard time coming up with, <laughs> with any. But um, one thing I do remember, it's not necessarily a story, it's more of a, was a, a character trait of mine, is that when I was in college, um, all of my closest friends um, referred to my schedule, I would say, as Sophia time. And because I had this habit, no matter where I was <laughs> or what I was doing, when it was time for me to go pick someone up or show up somewhere or something, I would say, I'll be there in 10 minutes. Even if there was no possible way I was going to be there in 10 minutes, um, or it might be 20 minutes or whatever time it was, it was inevitably half the time that I actually needed. And I swear, I always really thought that I would be there at the time that I said. So, um, it came, became a joke because people would actually started I think they started it amongst each other first saying um, whether, you know, talking about Sophia time, but then it eventually got to where they would ask me, okay, is that real time or is that Sophia time? And it would force me to think about whether or not I was actually going to be there at the time that I said I was. But I will say I've gotten much better about it, um, it primarily because of Nathan. Uh, <laughs> he is very punctual and very strict about times. And um, early on, I learned that if you are late for him, it's you might as well spit in his face. He does not like that. He likes to get places on time. He doesn't want to be late. And now both of my kids are fanatical about being on time places, um, including, you know, getting to school. So we always are getting to school. They, they are the ones that are up and at them and yelling at me to come on so that um, they will get their good 15 minutes before the bell rings so they have time because uh, they somehow have a sense of time of how much time it takes them to get to their locker and put their things away and so they between the three of them they keep me on time although I will say when I'm completely left to my own devices um, I still have a little trouble calculating how time it's actually going to get me to get somewhere um, like recently I had to take the kids to the doctor and I needed to check them out of school and they're in two different schools. So I picked one up here and one up there. And meanwhile, I had just completely miscalculated how long all of that would take and also how far it was to get to the pediatrician's office. So, um, I called them at like 10 till till saying I was going to be a little bit late. No, I think it was like five till and I was a little bit late. And I said, you know, I would be like five minutes late, but of course I was actually going to be 15 minutes late, but I didn't want to say that out loud because I didn't want them to give my appointment away. <sighs> so anyway, oh, and the other thing I was going to say is that um, one of the benefits I've had of moving to California is that there is the, such a thing as California time or West Coast time or LA time or whatever, which is nothing starts on time here. It, like Things just are always 10 minutes late. Um, and the other thing is that I've noticed is that if I can get out and get stuff done on the weekends before noon, no traffic, nobody's around. I mean, these people out here do cannot get themselves going before noon. Um, so anyway, maybe someday I'll do California versus Texas differences. Um, but that is one huge difference that I've noticed um, that actually works well in my favor. I don't actually have any health and wellness today because if you can believe it, I haven't had a doctor's appointment or a medical issue in the last seven days. 
And so we're gonna skip that this week. I'm not gonna give you a health lecture or anything. Um, and so I thought we'd just do a real quick, um, what are you reading segment. And so, you know, I'm trying to read more this year than I did last year. So the first one that I'm reading right now is uh, David Sedaris, Carnival of Snackery. I really like all of his books, so highly recommend that. Over the, oh, Lily is reading this one called The Song of Achilles. Oh my gosh, I love this book. It's really good. Um, it tells the story of um, Ach Achilles through um, Patroclus' eyes, and um, it's really good. So I recommend it. It's actually just a regular grown-up book. It's not YA, so you can find it in the regular section. And then over the Christmas break, I kind of really jump-started my uh, reading. Um, I never showed this at the last when I talked about books, so this is another really nice illustrated set of books that we have that my sister... Um, got for the kids uh because it, it, it anyway it's illustrated harry potter um and they he only they only did four of these the first four books so i read the first four of these um using this version over the holidays and it was fabulous and i didn't want to read the last three because that's when they get dark and people start dying and so i just stopped at four um and you know that was fun. All right, next up is my 80 show and tell. And I was out in the garage looking for one particular item, uh, but I realized it was in a box under like six other boxes. I just couldn't bring myself to rearrange everything. So another box that I opened had these things in it right, right on the top. And so I thought, well, this is crazy. So I'm just gonna get these. Okay, so first of all, this is my Sticker Mania book. And I know I got it for my birthday. I have a picture of myself holding it up. And I feel, oh, here we go. I started this collection on June 10th, 1984. I have 57 stickers on this date. So there you go. Um, so yes, I told you I got it for my birthday. I guess that was when I, my birthday when I turned 12. So let's see what stickers I've got. Let's see. I don't know what the first one is, but I've got, it's, you know, it has like pop art stickers. So that's the Jacksons. Uh, let me just go through. I've got some Scrape and Sniff. i got some Cartoons and Twinkles. i got some Scratch and Sniff. I could have sworn I had some. Oh, yep, here they are. <laughs> Here's my Cabbage Patch Kids stickers. And then over here I have some music stickers that are like, you can kind of feel them. So anyway, that's my sticker book from when I turned 12. And then the other thing I found right on the top is this little placard. Smile. It's the second best thing uh, you can do with your lips. I had this in my locker when I was in eighth grade. Why did my mother let me have this? I do not know, but this <laughs> was in my locker in eighth grade, um, probably ninth grade too, and I still have it. I think at some point I moved it out of my locker and put it on my wall in my house. So anyway, there you go. Um, that's my 80s show and tell for today. And I'll keep digging in those boxes to find more stuff. That's all that we have for today. Oh, one quote I wanted to read you guys because I really liked it. This was a reporter wrote about this in the New York Times right at the end of the year um, when she was kind of looking back on her year in review. Um, Melissa, uh, reporter Melissa Kirch says, the best piece of advice I received was from a friend quoting the philosopher Alan Watts. You are under no obligation to be the same person you were five minutes ago. I just love that. Um, and so if you were yesterday or five minutes ago, a person who was dreading getting older, right now you can turn to a person that is looking forward to getting older. So remember to embrace your age, no matter what it is. Have a great week found this picture of me hamming it up when I got this album for my birthday. Look at that permed hair. Nice, huh?